This video is about the graphs of transformations of tangent, secant, cotangent, and cosecant. Before I graph this fancy function, I'm going to graph the related parent function, y equals cosecant of x. Recall that cosecant of x is 1 over sine of x, so the graph of cosecant of x has vertical asymptotes where sine of x is 0. That puts the vertical asymptotes at pi, 2 pi, 0, and so on. Cosecant of x is 1, where sine is 1, so here, and so it looks something like this. Now when I graph my fancy function, I know that the 2 on the outside does a vertical stretch by 2, the plus 1 shifts up by 1, the pi means everything shrinks horizontally by 1 over pi, and so the period, instead of being 2 pi, like it is for cosecant, it's going to be 2 pi divided by pi, which is 2. Finally, this pi over 2 has to do with a horizontal shift, but in order to see by how much we horizontal shift, we need to factor out the pi first. So if I rewrite my function as 2 times cosecant pi times x plus a half plus 1, I can see that the horizontal shift is 1 half to the left. Let me do those transformations in pieces. First, I'll do the vertical motions, so I'll leave the horizontal axis as is. I'll stretch by a factor of 2, and now I'll shift up by 1. Next, I'll worry about the horizontal motion. Instead of a period of 2 pi, I'm going to have a period of 2. But in addition, everything is going to be shifted left by 1 half. So instead of having my vertical asymptotes at 0, pi, 2 pi, and so on, they would be at 0, 1, 2, and so on, except everything is shifted over by 1 half. So that means the vertical asymptotes will actually be at negative 1 half, 1 and a half, one and, a half and so on. Another way to find the vertical asymptotes is by noting that cosecant is 1 over sine. So therefore, cosecant pi x plus 1 half does not exist when sine pi x plus 1 half equals 0, i.e., when pi times x plus 1 half is equal to a multiple of pi. Canceling the pi's and solving for x, that's when x is some number minus a half, so those are exactly the values of, say, 1 half, 3 halves, 5 halves, and so on that we've drawn. So once we've got the vertical asymptotes in place, we can see that our graph fits in between them. This purple piece got shrunk horizontally and shifted by a half, so it ends up hugging the x-axis. I'll draw it in right here. And all the other pieces also get shrunk horizontally and shifted. So my final graph looks something like this. In this next problem, we're given the graph and we need to find the equation. The shape of the graph and the fact that it's increasing tells us it must be a tangent graph. But y equals tan x by itself would have a period of pi. Let's check what our graph has a period of. We need to find the horizontal width of one complete cycle. It's probably easiest to measure if I sketch in the vertical asymptotes, which seem to run from an x value of negative 3 to an x value of 1, so that's a horizontal distance of 4. So our graph might be something more like tan of bx, where pi over b has to be 4. 
that means that pi equals 4b, and so b is pi over 4. So our graph is probably more closely related to y equals tan of pi over 4x. But if it were exactly y equals tan of pi over 4x, then that middle point right here would be at the origin. And instead, that middle point is at negative 1, 1. That means my tangent graph is shifted left by 1 and up by 1. The left by 1 I can accomplish by writing x plus 1 when I have the pi over 4 factored out. The up by 1 I get by writing a plus 1 on the outside. Now it's possible there might also be a vertical stretch factor out front. An easy way to check for that is by plugging in x equals 0 and seeing whether what kind of number out in front I might need to get this y-intercept of 2. So I'm going to write y equals a tan pi over 4 quantity x plus 1 plus 1. Plug in the point 0, 2. So that's 2 equals a tan pi over 4, 0 plus 1 plus 1. And I can solve for a. Since tan of pi over 4 is just 1, this equation simplifies to 2 equals a times 1 plus 1, which means that a has to be 1. So in fact, this equation here is our final answer for this graph. To summarize, if we have a function of the form y equals a tan bx minus c plus d, the number a accomplishes a vertical stretch. The number b changes the period from pi to pi over b. The number d shifts vertically by d. And finally, to figure out what the number c is, we have to rewrite our equation in factored form, factoring out the b. And so we see that there's a phase shift right by c over b. The same things hold if instead of tangent, we have a graph of cotangent. We can say the same things for a graph of secant and a graph of cosecant. The only thing to be careful of is that b now changes the period from 2 pi to 2 pi over b, simply because the original period of secant and cosecant is 2 pi, whereas the original period of tan and cotan is just pi. If you know what the original graphs of tan, secant, cotangent, and cosecant look like, you can use your knowledge of transformations to graph more complicated functions.